Disney's Planes, one of the most hated on and criticized movies from Disney. Some say it was dumb, only made to sell toys. Others say it's a disgrace to its predecessor. Some even accuse Disney of ripping off their own movie. Is this true? Is it false? Well, today I'm here to give my thoughts on the movie, and deep dive into its plot, characters, music, and other such things. And at the end, we'll answer the question, is Planes a ripoff of Cars? I'm Sword of Man 15, and this is my review of Planes 10 years later. Before we start, I want to just say that there will be some bias in this review, but I'm going to allow it because A, the movie has already received enough hate, B, because it's a very personal movie to me, and C, because I can't find a single video analysis that gives this film a break and talks about all the good things it has in store. That's not to say I will be blinded to the issues this movie does have. It seems we must see what took place 10 years ago. Follow me if you want the truth. Planes was made by Disney Toon Studios, who are also responsible for the majority of Disney's movie sequels. Originally, the plan was to make a movie about trains, in a separate universe from Cars, but John Lasseter had the idea to switch it to a movie about planes. He wanted to expand the universe set up by Cars. In the world of Cars, I always thought that every kind of vehicle could be a character. I thought, what if we started doing a series of films that told the stories of those characters? The movie was directed by Clay Hall, a man who loved anything aviation since childhood. Flying had been in his family for generations, and that's what made the movie so much more special to him. In the same way Cars was very personal to Lasseter, Planes was very personal to Hall. For extra research and inspiration, the team traveled all over the U.S., seeing large airports and small towns. They even visited the USS Carl Vinson. They were able to get more accurate details for the operations and features of the planes. The movie was originally for a DVD release but the producers thought it was so good that they decided to release it in theaters as well. The movie took $50 million to produce and made over $240 million in revenue. It was released to theaters on August 13th, 2013. This movie is very close to me because at the time I was really into things like Thomas and Friends, Cars, and other such movies. I remember seeing the original trailer in Nazareth in the magazines, and oh boy was I pumped. I even bought a toy Ripslinger at Barnes & Noble before I even watched the movie. For years afterwards, me and my siblings collected the toys and would play our own races and adventures. And although I didn't have one, the pride of the collection was Jolly Wrench's Dusty. Even 10 years later, the movie still feels fresh and modern every time I watch it. Plains is about Dusty Cropopper, a crop duster who lives in the small town of Propwash Junction. He dreams of competing in the Wings Around the Globe Rally, a race of planes flying across the planet. However, he has two problems. The first and most obvious one is his build. He was built to dust crops, not to race. And the second issue is... I'm afraid of heights! This poses just as much of an obstacle as his design. Flying low across the world won't work. Despite this, he and his friend Chug train regularly for the qualifying time trials. The town mechanic, Dottie, constantly tries to get these two to face reality but Dusty is undeterred. Even Chuck can see that they need some help. So, Dusty goes to Skipper, the war veteran of the Jolly Wrenches, to ask him to help him train. He gives him a very blunt no. At the qualifier, we are introduced to the main antagonist of the film, Ripslinger, the current reigning champion of the wings around the globe. When it comes time for Dusty to fly, he impresses everyone by coming in sixth place. Unfortunately, that's one spot too low. However, it is discovered that a 5th place competitor used illegal fuel to help him win. Thus, Dusty qualifies to race. He eventually does convince Skipper to help train him, and serve as his radio coach from home. Skipper is unimpressed by Dusty refusing to fly high, so he trains him in agility and using physics and gravity in his favor. He even gives Dusty the symbol of the Jolly Wrenches when he leaves. When Dusty arrives at the start of the race, we meet the other main side characters. Bulldog from the UK, Ishani from India, Rochelle from Canada, and El Chupacabra from Mexico. El Chu and Dusty hit it right off, and before the race starts, he sees Rochelle and immediately has a crush. Dusty also has a crush on Ashani. On the first leg of the race, Dusty comes in last place, having flown low and near the freezing ocean. During the second leg, he does much better. That is until one of Bulldog's engines fails and he starts to fall from the sky. Dusty gives up his spot in the race to save him and help him stay in the race. In Germany, he and El Chu meet Franz, his only fan outside of his friends. He and El Chu convince Dusty to remove his sprayer and help him move up in the race. In the third leg, Dusty uses what he has learned from Skipper to move up to 8th place. 
It's here that we see Rip Singer feels threatened by Dusty. Not only because he is stealing the spotlight, but he might have what it takes to prevent him from obtaining his fourth win and breaking the record. The next morning, Dusty asks Skipper if he can go through the Himalaya Mountains instead of flying high. Skipper tells him that he needs to go over the mountains. However, while going on a flight with a Shawnee, she advises him to follow the railroad and fly low. When he does, however, he finds a tunnel and is forced to fly up. For the second time, his fear gets in the way and he starts to turn back, but he decides to fly through the tunnel instead and nearly dies in the process. But it all pays off when he arrives in first place. He then realizes that Ripsinger had convinced the Shawnee to try to get him out of the race in exchange for a new propeller. After the next leg, Al Chu, who has constantly been trying to impress Rochelle, attempts to win her heart by singing a loud song to her. Dusty steps in and helps him finally win her over. During the leg across the Pacific Ocean, Ned and Zed, Ripslinger's henchmen, break off his antenna and his only means to navigate and communicate. As he is running out of fuel, he is intercepted by a pair of F-A-18 Hornets and is led to make an emergency landing on the USS Dwight D. Flysenhower. This is the same ship that Skipper flew from. While there, Dusty learns that he only ever flew one mission, despite all the war stories he's told him. While trying to complete the leg, he crashes into a wave and has to make a mayday call. When he is brought to Mexico, he is in no condition to finish the race. The truth comes out as Skipper tells Dusty about his only mission. While on patrol, a misjudgment causes him and his entire squadron to be shot down, him being the only one to survive. Not only did he have the responsibility over them, but he had also trained them. The memory of that day has kept him from flying ever since. Now knowing the truth, Dusty gives up all hope, but Dottie, who didn't even think he could qualify, lifts his spirits. The Skipper may have been wrong for what he did, but he was right about you. You're not a crop duster, you're a racer. And now, the whole world knows it. And all the friends he has made along the way come together to help fix him in time to continue the race. Ishani even gives up her Sky Slicer Mark V and earns back their friendship. Ripslinger, however, isn't about to let Dusty win on the last leg. He and the twins plot to make sure that Dusty won't be a threat any longer. As Dusty is catching up, Ripslinger tends to crash him, but Skipper swoops in to save the day. He faces off with Rip while Dusty handles the twins. Skipper gets hurt in the chaos, but encourages Dusty to finish the race. But despite his rebuilding, Dusty just can't match Rip's speed. It's then that he remembers that Skipper had told him while training that the high altitude will give him extra speed. So, Dusty begins to climb. For the third time, he gets scared and nearly turns back. But this time he pushes on and finally conquers his fear. Using everything he has learned from Skipper, Dusty catches up to Ripsinger and passes him just as he poses for the cameras. Dusty wins the race and meets all the friends he has made along the way. The movie ends with him and Skipper on the aircraft carrier being launched off the catapults. Okay, so because many have already criticized this movie, and this is a defensive analysis, I'm only going to cover the actual problems we see here. Firstly, the Skipper flashback. The problem most people have with this is that it raises questions about World War II. Were some of history's worst bad guys in car form? Also, there are some things that break the universe set up here. Got beachwear, dinnerwear, underwear, my floaties. Come in. Why and how are the cars supposed to wear clothes and use floaties? Why do they use oven mitts? How are they supposed to drink tea? I'll see you in Mexico. Yeah, oh, I'll bring the salsa. <laughs> they eat salsa? Also, what happened to Ned and Zed? How long did they stay there? In 49, the P-38 Sky Ranger averaged 337 miles per what? hour. 337? Well, actually, 337.4, but they round it down in the record books. Why would you do Some that? Some people just have no respect for decimal yeah, points. I, know. Tell I mean, why it. couldn't they round it up? Seriously. It's math. You round down because it's below 5. But the biggest problem with this movie is actually one that people haven't directly addressed. Well, not exactly. The biggest problem with this movie is cars. What? I know what you might be thinking. What is your problem? Let me explain. Don't get me wrong, Cars is a great movie that I've loved as long as I can remember. In fact, it was my favorite movie for like the first half of my life. But most of the issues people have are comparisons between the two movies. Some even go so far as to claim that Disney ripped off their own movie. The comparisons include Dusty and Lightning, Chuck and Mater, Doc and Skipper, Chick Hicks and Ripslinger, and Sally and Ashani. This, however, couldn't be further from the truth. Where Cars is about a hotshot, self-important jerk learning to slow down and enjoy life and the people around him, Planes is the complete opposite. Dusty is some random nobody who wants to prove he can do more than work on a farm his whole life. There's absolutely nothing similar about these two characters. And Doc spent most of Cars trying to hide who he really was, whereas Skipper was seen as a war hero, but had really failed his only mission. While Chick crashes and bumps his competitors in full view of everyone, Ripslinger works in the shadows and out of public sight. 
Contrary to popular belief, Planes is not a ripoff of Cars. It was made to expand the vehicle universe and world build. If this had been a movie about boats, or spaceships, or even the trains movie they were originally going to do, I'll bet those movies would have met the same criticism. You might as well say that because Rapunzel showed up in that one scene from Frozen, the movie was a ripoff of Tangled because it was the same universe. I'm willing to bet that if Cars came out after Planes, that it would be a movie I'm defending today. Now, let's talk about everything great about Planes, starting with the animation. While it's nothing like its predecessor, it still looks great and it has its own style and feel. I love the lighting and texture of everything. Whereas Cars is mostly a dusty desert setting, a large majority of Planes is either in the sky or low or near the ocean. The character movement is also realistic and believable, or at least most of the time. Next, the music. No one can deny that this soundtrack is fantastic. Nothing can stop me down in particular. This song really wraps up everything about Planes. Against all challenges and hurdles, Dusty refuses to give up. Fly is also an noteworthy piece as well, but the background music is where it really shines. Especially the triumph of the final race and the sorrow of Skipper's flashback. It managed to fit and emphasize each and every scene of this movie. The world design is also worth mentioning. The landscape of the world resembles that of Planes. Also, there's a rock formation that looks suspiciously like Wheel Well. Another detail is the tractors representing cows. In India, many people believe that after they die, they will be reincarnated as cows or other animals. In Plains, they believe they will be recycled as tractors instead. It's a fun detail. Other noteworthy things include the use of illegal fuels instead of drugs, the planes staying in hangars instead of houses, the navy planes folding their wings to salute, the blowtorch used to light candles, and the Statue of Liberty being a forklift. I also love that the thing is Sparky pushes Skipper on is like a wheelchair. The camera splitting in the time shows is also a treat. And the parallel of Dusty chasing Ripsling's shadow into the training, oh, you can ask for a better callback. And there's so many other things I like to include, but I'm trying to streamline the script as much as possible. A small headcanon of mine is that Franz wasn't always a flying car. I like to think he had those features added on. This would make him being a fan of Dusty feel more real, him seeing someone do the same thing as he did. The comedy in this movie is also great. Some of the funniest bits are with Bulldog and El Chew. You leave me no choice! I... Squeeze my you. you have been shamed. I hope I can get over it. Oh, I just did. <laughs> I saw you do this unbelievable high G vertical turn. How did you do that? Well, let me tell you. In fact, why don't I tell you all my racing secrets? Really? No. Are you crying? I don't cry. I'm British. El Chupacabra. I think someone is calling me. I have to go. <laughs> And what's that? That is my lunch. Don't touch. It wasn't until my most recent rewatch that I noticed how incredibly funny this movie is. I heard you shot down 50 planes. You looking to be number 51? Uh, no. And of course, the characters. As I said, Bulldog and Lachu are mostly here for comedy, particularly the latter. His design really reflects this. He's a short and stout plane who moves in weird and funny ways, and even moves his landing gear like feet. At the same time, he's also a good friend and a lead in his B-plot with Rochelle. I also enjoy the Dottie and Chug dynamic. You have the smart tech person, and then Chug, who isn't really the sharpest tool in the shed. His Micro Air 5000 DL aerial applicator. Use your words. His sprayer. Right. Sprayer. Bulldog is also a solid character for me. When he's introduced, he thinks that because it's a contest, it's every plane for himself. But after Dusty rescues him, his views start to shift. And while his contribution to fixing Dusty was minor, it still showed his development. And in the final leg, he is shown cheering Dusty on as he's being overtaken by him. While Rochelle is more of a plot device than a character, she does deliver some great roasts. Are you tired? What? Because you have been flying through my mind. Non-stop. Hmm. And why would I be tired? Flying through such a teeny tiny space, huh? Skipper is also a great character. After his whole squadron was killed, he can't bring himself to fly because it was only remind him of that guilt. But in a life or death situation, he leaves all that behind to save Dusty, his first successful trainee. While Ripsinger isn't the best Disney villain out there, he's still not the worst. His motives are realistic, and up until the end, he tries to work in the shadows to sabotage Dusty, and always avoiding the public seeing his bad side. Get my good side, fellas! He wants to break the racing record and go down in history. The thought of a crop duster beating him, a professional and famous race plane, would ruin him. He's not about to stop me from making history. As I was writing the script, I initially didn't really know what I was going to say about Ashani, but after talking about it, I realized that she is rather similar to Bulldog, starting with faulty beliefs that a hero is a winner, no matter what they are like. 
But she comes to learn that a hero isn't someone famous or popular. A hero is someone you can look up to because of their character. They'll help others in any situation, even if they risk their own life doing so. And of course, Dusty. Dusty is a protagonist underdog who wants to prove he can do more than fly back and forth across a cornfield all day. His fear of heights also makes sense. He has spent his whole life near the ground in this low lane. It's an irrational fear, and I guarantee that anyone watching this either deals with a similar fear or knows someone else who does. Some examples include fear of the dark, heights, performing, and harmless animals. But the thing that makes Dusty's fear really help the story is that it's the main thing holding him back. He originally trailed behind and couldn't move up because he refused to face his fear. But when he finally conquered his fears, he was able to use every bit of skill and knowledge that he had learned to accomplish his goal. What sets Dusty's story apart from the other underdog achieving their goal movies is the impact he has on the other racers. Each of them came away a different plane than before. He helped El Chu win Rochelle's heart, he saved Bulldog's life and showed him the concept of true sportsmanship, and he showed Ashani what a hero should be. Ripslinger was willing to do whatever it took to reach his goal, even to put others at risk. But Dusty showed that heroes should be looked up to because of their character, not their popularity. And it's thanks to his character that all the other racers come together to help him get fixed up and finish the race. The messages of this film are really good. I fear may be what prevents you from reaching your goal, but if you conquer it, you can do things you never knew you could do. The second message is a little less obvious. You affect each and every person in your life, whether that be your family, friends, co-workers, or anyone else. And it's up to you to treat others well and form strong connections, or look out for number one and do things only help yourself. Two solid morals that anyone, no matter what their age, can learn and apply to their lives. I learned a lot more from you than you ever learned from me. Okay, we've now gone over the good, the bad, the plot, and the development of planes. So, what can we take away from this? How do I rate this movie excluding nostalgia? Well, I've thought about it long and hard, and I've finally come to a conclusion. I give planes a 9 out of 10. Why? Well, I can see how much effort went into it. The music slaps hard, the comedy can be great, the characters aren't half bad, and the overall story has some great morals. That's not to say I'm completely blind to the negatives of this film. I have my nitpicks and there are some things that raise questions. But like, it's not the first time this has happened, and I can see why most adults wouldn't enjoy this movie. All films have a target demographic, and this one was made for young boys. Just like some things are aimed at little girls, parents, teens, or just the whole family. But anyone can still enjoy them. But most of all, I love the effort that went into this movie. One can really see how much this film mattered to Clay Hall. A combination of a movie about sentient planes, and a message about friends, family, and facing your fears. It's really a love letter to planes, the history, and the world's aviators who defend and work for their countries. And to answer the question posed at the beginning of this video, no, planes is not a ripoff of cars. True, it had similar goals in mind, be a passion project for its directors, be a love letter to vehicles, and sell merchandise. But at the end of the day, all the movies that take place in this universe are all unique. Each one has a story to tell, and has its own way of conveying it. But wait, what's this? Oh yes, planes had a sequel the following year. Maybe I'll make a video about it on its 10th birthday, who knows. Before we wrap things up, here's a few things I either forgot to mention or couldn't find a place for in the video. Skipper and Sparky have actually appeared before this movie in one of the Mater's Tall Tale episodes, although their design and voice were a little different. Not only that, but Dusty was apparently going to make an appearance in the Cars on the Road series, but it was dropped for some reason. Hopefully we get to see these characters meet up again in the near future. Also, I found out while rewatching some of the old trailers for the movie that Rochelle was originally Australian. That's Rochelle, the Australian rally champ. I don't know why they changed it, but I think it's better the way it is now. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this deep dive into the film today. I've been working on this video for several months now, so sorry I haven't uploaded much. But I kind of prefer taking my time with these bigger videos, as the end result is much better. I'm striving to improve my editing, recording, and writing skills with each upload. I'll upload a video in a week or two and tell y'all about my plans for the channel and what projects I'm working on. Anyways, that's the end of this video, so be awesome and stay safe. Goodbye!